Let's say you have somebody who, who comes to you and is like, I really love this Christian artist. Um, and you put in the, you put in the CD, we don't do that anymore. You, you go to Spotify, you listen to the Christian artist, and it's like screamo. But let's just say this, this happens and you're like, well, I, I feel like there's some cognitive dissonance here or there's some dissonance between, you know, the content of the gospel that, that I mean, sure, maybe there are some passages of, of scripture that feel more screamo than others, like, um, Song of Moses or something. Uh, but, you know, like, let's say it's, uh, Psalm 20, 23, the Lord is my shepherd and set to screamo. And you say, there's some kind of dissonance here. And then, and you think, well, how can I describe that dissonance musically speaking? And you go to the music and you analyze the chords or maybe, you know, it's in a minor key, but you can't say minor is bad. I mean, you could, you could go all day, like, analyzing the music, looking for some reason why it's wrong to have that pairing. But I think that that's, that's treating music as if it's something that can be isolated like that. But the fact is that music um, always has a context. Um, there's, there's the word that maybe I should have used, not text, but context. Music always has a context. Um, and it's silly to think that you can ever separate that context out. Um, like I said, with Beethoven's Fifth, music seems to attract texts and context to itself. It attracts memories and associations, um, sometimes even smells and images to itself. Um, and it's very naive to think that you can just uh, fiat will that context out of the music. Um, a great example of this, to my mind, is the history of CCM. Now, I, this is, you, you guys may point out uh, I, I've under-researched this thesis and I need to research it more. But if I look at the history of contemporary Christian music, going back to like the 60s, there's this guy, Larry Norman. Do any of you know that name? Larry Norman? Okay. He's like very early contemporary Christian music. If you play his stuff, um, it's like, it sounds um, much more in the kind of maybe Pete Seeger, Bob Dylan end of things, um, but contemporary Christian music. Even if you look at a guy like Keith Green, right, who's from the 80s, or you know, when was he, is that, is that right? Yeah. Um, that's very much different from what CCM is now. So, so what is it about CCM now that basically you can either be the CCM genre or you can do Christian rap? And those are basically the two options, right? CCM genre has a very distinct homogenous sound. Um, you know, it's it's basically like uh, you know that that's like the 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 ooey gooey reverb sort of sound. It's got the atmosphere. And I, I was thinking about this, and then I I played the uh, opening of Joshua Tree, and I was like, oh, that's it. This is this is the moment where all of a sudden a whole bunch of Christians were like, that's the sound we need. That's the sound of transcendence. That's the sound of Christian worship. That's even why I feel like so many Christian homeschoolers, they love Coldplay. It's like, it's because Coldplay is, is just, it's just one little step away. It's like, we'll take a little bit of Jesus out of it and that you, you, there you go. You got, you got Coldplay. Um, I mean, we could proliferate the examples. Uh, but um, the, the question to my mind is, well, why didn't we just stick with Larry Norman? Uh, or, you know, why, why isn't it that we go to a completely different type of artist um, for inspiration? You know, if, if, if U2 was the thing where we just were going to take the lyrics out and pop some Jesus onto it, we could have done that with, I mean, name an artist that's a totally different genre. Let's say, okay, uh, since I talk about her a lot, Beyonce, okay? Why, why is it that we don't just like slap a, we all listen to Beyonce, as much as we listen to YouTube, presumably. Um, <laughs> I do. And w why didn't we just take some lyrics off of her and, and slap, some onto, uh, slap some onto her music? Uh, it's because there's something about the genre that doesn't, to us, seem to fit very well. Um, now, I think that that reveals that we've made some very weird assumptions about what we think is the proper sound for worshipful Christian music. I don't think that Joshua Tree is the proper sound for worshipful Christian music, but there is something about our zeitgeist that does just assume that. So um, again, all of that to say, if, if you analyze music not just as the formal things of what are the pitches and the rhythms that make up the music, but uh, look at music as 
something that accretes context to itself, um, I think that you can be a lot more discerning about um, making aesthetic evaluations and, and so forth.